This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about why Bitcoin beats Dogecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bcash, BSV, and Ethereum. And to do so, I want to talk a little bit about the hash rate. We haven't talked about this in a while, but the hash rate of a network is just a measure of the total processing power of that network, like the Bitcoin network. These, these uh, crypto assets are very interesting because you have a crypto asset like Bitcoin, which is an asset. You also have the Bitcoin network, which is all the miners and all the full nodes connected to each other. And as the network grows, the value of Bitcoin grows. This is what we call network effects. Now the hash rate, you want to see the hash rate of a network increasing. And what this means is that more and more powerful computers or ASICs are being added to the network and securing the network. And a, a network that has a higher hash rate will have more security. You can almost think of the network like a supercomputer, a global supercomputer. And right now, Bitcoin is the biggest supercomputer in the world by these measurements, as we're going to see. The reason you want to see a higher hash rate and more security is very obvious. If you're a billionaire, if you're a corporation, do you choose to store your wealth in a wet paper bag or a metal safe. And if you look at some of the cryptocurrencies, for example, Ethereum Classic, which was really the original uh, that continued after um, after there's the hard fork um, when they had all the DAO problems, which I, I've talked about in other videos, this was sort of the, the uh, fork that got left behind or the original that got left behind. And it's been subject to repeated 51% uh, attacks and some exchanges have even delisted it uh, because of this simply because there are not enough uh, miners securing this network. Everyone moved on to ETH, uh, which is what it's now called Ethereum. Dogecoin, a lot of people ask me about that. Here's a historical chart of the hash rate of the Dogecoin network. And we can see that it really has gone nowhere since 2019. We're back to those levels in spite of all the all the interest. And so when you see a sideways chart like this with the hash rate, the hash rate is not increasing. There's not, um, it's not growing in the way you would expect the hash rate of a vibrant network to be go to be growing. Bcash and BSV, which are both uh, hard forks of, uh, of Bitcoin, which is the real Bitcoin BTC. These, you can see that their hash rate has gone nowhere since they forked off. So this is BCH and BSV. Uh, it's a very low hash rate and it's also sideways. So these are these are uh, forks of Bitcoin that you shouldn't even consider for this reason. They're not, uh, they can't compete. They don't have the same uh, security and mining network. What you want to see is a chart that's like this. And this is actually Ethereum. As you, you may know, I'm not a huge fan of Ethereum, though it's been an interesting experiment to watch. This is what you want to see the hash rate of a network. You want to see it up and to the right. It, Ethereum was sort of caught uh, sideways until, um, so call it March of last year, March 2020, and now it's been up and to the right. This is a healthy, growing network. Now, the problem with the Ethereum network and the reason it's not as secure as the Bitcoin network is that it doesn't have the same high hash rate. So the hash rate, uh, this is like an average daily hash rate, was 507,911 giga hashes on April 6th. Now, if we take a look at this uh, converter calculator, we can put that right in here, the number of giga hashes, and then we can convert that to tera hashes or exa hashes. The Bitcoin network is currently measured in exa hashes. And uh, if we take a look at where it's trading right now, it's currently at about 165 uh, exo hashes. And so what we can see that if we just do the math on that, I'm going to do it really quickly. We do 165 divided by uh, 0 0.0005. We can see that the Bitcoin network is about 330,000 uh, times the computing power or hash rate down here. This would be uh, where, where Bitcoin is, which is roughly call it uh, call it 165. And so if we just put that in, we can see that uh, it just blows Ethereum out of the water. And this is one of the reasons that Ethereum is having to move to proof of stake, not just the high gas fees, but because it cannot keep up with the Bitcoin network. If we take a look at the Bitcoin and Ethereum hash rate, uh, both on the same chart. 
we can't even see the Ethereum hash rate. As we said, it's down here. It's this red line. If we switch to log scale, we can barely see it down here. Bitcoin is just many orders of magnitude more secure. And this gives it really a permanent advantage. It, it, once you have, once you're ahead like this, the um, winners tend to join larger networks and institutions tend to buy from, uh, participate in more liquid, deep markets that have higher higher hash rate, higher security. And so it becomes a, a sort of a, a, um, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Once you're ahead, it's very difficult for competitors to catch up. And this is one of the main reasons that Ethereum is converting to a proof of stake. It's a little bit sick, but a proof of stake system where in order to become a miner or what's called a validator, you actually have to buy some ETH. And proof of stake really, when you begin to look at it, it looks just like the fiat system. The more ETH you own, the more you get to participate in this. And so it's really another, it's a reinvention of the rich getting to make the rules and change them whenever they want. This is exactly what's happening. The uh, Someone like Vitalik, who is the, uh, the centralized leader of a centralized cryptocurrency called Ethereum, has decided to transition to proof of stake. And uh, he's obviously a billionaire and very wealthy. This is very different from how Bitcoin functions. Proof of stake system, just like the fiat system, get as close to the money printer as possible. Well, Vitalik printed up his own money. That's as close as you can get. This is called the Kentelian effect, where the closer you are to the money printer, the better you do. This is what, what Wall Street does with the Fed. They eat out of the trough like pigs that the Fed uh, slops them with. And so the more US dollars you have, obviously, the more you can earn. And the really sinister thing about Ethereum in particular is so many of the stakeholders, so many of the holders of ETH were given ETH for free in a pre-mine. And now they can stake them under proof of stake and earn even more. Under proof of stake, there's this ownership threshold for participating in the system. If you want to become a validator, you need to buy ETH probably from one of the original uh, holders of it in order to participate. Obviously, you could buy it on an exchange, etc. But you have this situation where you have all these whales who are granted ETH in the pre-mine. And so it's, it's fairly sinister. I do talk about this in my video on Ethereum's dirty history, going a little bit more into the pre-mine and pre-sale of Ethereum. But the main takeaway from this video is just that uh, in spite of all of this, the Bitcoin network is just so many times more secure and more powerful. You can trade something like Dogecoin. You can have fun with it. It's a meme coin that's not really good for anything. But you can see where the billionaires are putting their money, where the um, where corporations are putting their money, and even possibly uh, we started to see sovereign wealth funds like Temasek out of Singapore uh, buying Bitcoin. They're not buying Dogecoin, and they're not buying uh, Bcash or BSV or any of these other uh, any of these other coins. If you want to learn a little bit more about proof of stake versus proof of work. Uh, you can check out this video as well. I'll link to both of these, both of these videos, both the Ethereum history and the proof of stake versus proof proof of work. In case you, you're not familiar with those terms, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.